minute. Okay, let's try that again. We got some really obnoxious neighbors around here, you know? Always starting up their loud equipment, blowing smoke into my garage. The nerve. This one is a 1985 California model. This project has been stopped and started many, too many times over the past few years. I bought this project in 2010. I purchased it from a nice fellow in Bakersfield who started some of the work and then had health problems and was never able to get back to it, unfortunately for him. Of course, after I bought it and started uh, building on this bike, I did interrupt the build with the blue bike over there that was acquired and built and the yellow bike sitting right next to it has been uh, rebuilt two or three times since I started this one. I had been going back and forth with him for probably six months and he wasn't sure if he wanted to sell it. Well we finally came to terms one Sunday afternoon so I immediately went out to the wife's minivan and pulled all of the rear seats out of that thing. I think I left my house at about 4 p.m. that afternoon and it was a four hour drive each way plus the time at his place to literally pack all of the space in the back of that minivan with RZ stuff. I was done unloading at my house at about 2 a.m. and had to be at work that morning by 6 a.m. That was quite a haul of parts. I was able to sell off extra parts and recover all of my money and then some. I've put a few bucks into this thing since then. There was a brand new set of stainless steel Jim Lomas GP pipes, which may end up on this bike, and a beautiful set of classic Toomey pipes that now reside on my 83 Canadian. I think there were maybe two more sets of pipes I sold off. Oh, and a brand new Metmachex RZ350 swing arm that will end up on a different bike. That's the backstory. Right now, other than paint and tires, it's just about there. And it still needs an initial startup, of course. The front end is uh, 1990s FCR forks, wheel and brakes, calipers were rebuilt years ago and powder coated gold. I sanded and sanded and then sanded some more and then polished and polished and polished some more. The front fork lowers this is a very time-consuming and laborious process, polishing these things. The frame is painted gloss black from the previous owner. I did not redo it. The radiator is a China aluminum unit. I bought two of these radiators and both of them had to be reworked. The upper mounting pin. You can probably see it better on this side. Had to be relocated on both of them. I had to cut it off and had them, uh, guy at work, weld them back on. That was a pain. The aluminum swing arm is from an 80s FC 600. The FC linkage parts have been used. They've been powder coated. The rear shock is a vintage, never been used. Fox Twin Clicker. I picked up this reservoir mount off of eBay. I thought it was pretty nice. I'm sure it's a China part. I don't remember how much it cost. The FCR rear brake caliper has been rebuilt and powder coated gold like the fronts. Currently the rear wheel is an FCR 18 inch. I will probably use it for a few tires. 
both of the wheels have beautiful gloss black paint, again from the previous owner. I just need to install some 90 degree valve stems. to get rid of them rubber ones. When I replace the tires, these are uh, 20, 20 year old brand new tires. Anybody want them? At some point I'm sure I'll do a conversion to an SV650 17 inch rear wheel. I went through the same process on this bike. It has the SV650 17 inch rear wheel. Works quite nice. This one started life after the conversion with the uh, with the FCR 18 inch wheel, and then I converted it. The rear sets are T12 Tech. Many years ago, a member on the RZ350 forum did a limited run of these rear sets. They look they look really nice, but they're a bit bulky, which I guess makes them kind of period correct. That's how they were back in the day. Kind of like these Tarazis on this bike, which work quite well by the way. The fuel tank has a couple of small dents I'll have to get fixed. or learn how to do it myself. But it's ready to go. Used metal rescue on it. It didn't require any major de-rusting. This bike has some fancy little tidbits like, oh boy, is that going to show up? There we go. This triple tree clamp bolt with the Yamaha tuning fork emblem on it. The head bolts, same thing, they're stainless steel engraved with the tuning fork, Yamaha tuning fork logo. Got some fancy radiator hoses on here too. I'm not sure if I really like these. They're a little bit too blue. But they're there. They're not coming off. On shiny, clean, showy bikes like this will be where high strength steel fasteners are not required. I use stainless steel fasteners with anti-seize on the threads. After cutting the fasteners to the length required, they're chucked into a drill press and sanded with three grades of sandpaper, then taken to a buffer and buffed on two separate wheels for a very highly polished finish. These Jim Lomas stainless steel pipes are called classics. Pretty sure they're called classics. They're brand new, purchased from a forum member who received them directly from the vendor in Czechoslovakia. And they had a little dent. So the vendor sent him a brand new set of pipes and told him to keep these. I got them for half price. I do believe I'm not going to be happy with the sound coming out of these fat, gigantic looking silencers. But we'll see. The gearing is currently 17 tooth countershaft sprocket, which you can't see, and a 45 tooth aluminum rear sprocket, and of course a new o-ring chain. Hopefully I won't forget to put the master link on. Um, the Thrasher bike, this bike over here that I just rebuilt, I've been running a 17 tooth countershaft and 43 tooth, so two teeth less on the rear. I think this is perfect gearing for the riding I do up in the hills on this bike. So this one will be a tiny bit uh, lower and a little quicker. The engine as purchased from the previous owner was rebuilt in 2001 by Bakersfield Yamaha. Uh, it appears to have mild porting. A friend of mine at work that has been into two strokes for decades, he's currently racing CR125 shifter carts, took the cylinders home and cleaned the porting up a bit.
It has 64.5 second over Wiseco forged pistons, rebuilt crankshaft, new transmission bearings, new clutch, I think it's a Barnett clutch. But cosmetically on the outside this engine was not up to my standards. They took it apart and put it back together with no concern on aesthetics. Additionally, when I started taking this engine apart, there was visible cracking on the left side crank seal uh, just from age and lack of use. I rebuilt the engine, I think, completing it in 2014. Uh, I did use a thin copper head gasket. which brought the squish down to one millimeter. I'm anxious to see if this copper head gasket holds up properly and does not leak. It is always recommended on these engines to use a Yamaha head gasket. Uh, the carburetors are brand new Spec 2 modified VM30s with new unifilters. These were new in box with a brand new Spec 2 modified throttle cable with the oil pump cable, which is nice. I just came out to say hi to my barking dog and notice we have a nice winter sunset going on. It is a little chilly here today. Right now it's about 50 degrees. Uh, it's chilly by spoiled California weather standards, not Canada weather. I think that will do it for now for this introduction and overview. I hope to start this bike in the next few weeks when we have a nice sunny winter day. Wish me luck. Don't forget to subscribe and like my videos.